Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 8th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In diaries this weekend, we got one from Guy about a rash of uh, fake Office 365 payment notices that spread ransomware. The from address, uh, no reply at support.onmicrosoft.com, actually is sort of legitimate too. Support.onmicrosoft.com is a valid domain for Microsoft. It does have an SPF record set up that limits senders to SPF.protection dot Outlook.com. Now that resolves uh, to a long list of net blocks. Haven't checked them yet, uh, but possibly that anybody within Microsoft's Outlook 365 ecosystem would be able to send valid email on behalf of this domain. And over the last few years, most websites started using the .well known directory. This directory can be used for files like robots.txt, but is most often probably used in order to obtain certificates from Let's Encrypt via the ACME certificate protocol. And of course, there are now a number of other certificate authorities that also adopted this protocol in order to make it easier to renew certificates. But what apparently is happening according to Cscaler is that the dot well known directory is also used by bad guys to hide files. Now, these files are often located in the directories that are created for the ACME protocol, but the attacker here is not really after certificates or anything like this. They're just looking for a safe space that's not easily found by an administrator in order to drop files that are then delivering phishing pages or malware. I think uh, there are a couple of reasons why the bad guys do like uh, these directories. First of all, well, they're hidden in Unix starting with the dot. So uh, newbie administrator may not even be aware that these directories exist. Secondly, if you're updating your software, if you're updating Joomla or whatever you're running, then these directories are typically not overwritten. And lastly, If an administrator finds these directories, they probably have no idea what's supposed to be in these directories. So having some additional files there and being vaguely aware that uh, these directories are used uh, by systems like Let's Encrypt, the administrator will probably just leave these files alone. For the most part, uh, these directories should actually be empty if you're using them to obtain new certificates. Uh, The challenge files that are being deposited in these directories are typically deleted once the challenge has been used. And researchers at the Ben Gurion University came up uh, with an interesting and somewhat practical attack in order to alter images collected by computer tomography systems. These images are typically saved in the DICOM format, which actually does allow for an optional digital signature, but this digital signature is often not used or not verified. Also an attacker having access to the system producing the images, of course, may be able to alter the image before it is digitally signed. To make the entire attack practical, they actually came up with a machine learning algorithm that then learned what typical images with cancer looked like and was then able to manipulate images collected by these systems from healthy individuals uh, to then insert these cancers uh, later. They did actually use medical professionals and uh, gave them images that were manipulated, not manipulated uh, for diagnosis. And uh, these professionals were not able to tell the difference between a manipulated and an original image. I think the main lesson here is probably to use this digital signature feature. Of course, uh, these systems themselves should be adequately secured. That's also sort of one of the countermeasures being pointed out in the paper. 
And of course, what made this particular attack more complex uh, than your standard uh, X-ray or ultrasound image was that CT images are three-dimensional. So there is quite a bit of more data so that has to be manipulated and fitting the manipulated data in well with the surrounding data. Of course, that's sort of where the machine learning algorithm somewhat helped. A popular framework to create GUI applications uh, from languages uh, like Python to C++ is the Qt framework. Uh, well, uh, apparently uh, this framework suffers from vulnerabilities that can be used in order to trigger a remote code execution vulnerability. While uh, this is really a part of the framework or a problem with the framework, uh, there are two specific applications that the survey initiative that published the vulnerability sort of is pointing out here. The first one is Cisco WebEx Teams and the second one Malwarebytes Anti-Malware. Exploitation is pretty straightforward in both of these cases. For example, in Malwarebytes case, all it would take is a specific iframe tag that's being added to a website. And as Malwarebytes scans the HTML code for this website, the remote code execution will be triggered. The blog post by the Serial Initiative does include respective proof of concept exploits. Well, if you wonder where I'll be off to next, I have actually two public classes coming up in May. One is Defending Web Applications. Uh, that's in San Diego, May 9th. And then a second class, and that's our Intrusion Detection class in San Antonio at the end of May, starting May 28th. And as usual, you can find more details in the show notes. Uh, thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.